Hey guys, new day, new animal. We are all about pretty today, just like you guys. So we're gonna keep on that track. Got another pretty animal for you guys. Let's get into it. Today we are doing the pink skunk clownfish, or you can call it a pink anemone clownfish, whichever you prefer. You can find this beautiful tropical fish in the Pacific Ocean, more in Northern Australia, and like a little bit above that. So if you're thinking this kind of clownfish, when I say clownfish, because this is the one that everyone knows, you are on the right track. The pink skunk clownfish is a species of clownfish. It's just this one is a pink to peachy color, and their white stripes are just in a different position. So their entire body is covered in this pinky peach color. One of their white stripes, as you see, is at the top and it starts from their head and goes all the way down their dorsal ridge all the way through their tail. Then they have these white ventricle stripes that go down their face that are right behind their eyes on each side. The pink skunk clownfish is the smallest clownfish species though. So the clownfish that you all know, Nemo, can actually reach up to about five inches, but the pink skunk only gets about four, like it touches four inches. So as any other clownfish, the pink skunk clownfish loves to live in anemones. The anemone may sting other animals, but clownfish have this mucus covering around them. It actually protects them from the stings. If you look closely, you can see that they have some anemone shrimp that live in there with them too. So they all can live together in a symbiotic relationship. This species of clownfish is the only species of clownfish that eats mostly on algae and zooplankton. So the pink skunk clownfish are what we call sequential hermaphrodites, and that means that at some point they will change sex. This species is a size-based dominance hierarchy, and so that means that the females are actually larger than the males. So in their groups, they'll have one large female who is dominant, and then that female will have one large male who is considered the breeder. And then there'll be some other smaller males around them. They're called the non-breeders. Now, let me explain to you what happens if the female dies. If the female is to die, then the breeder male will change and turn into the dominant female. Then the more larger non-breeding male will turn into the breeding male because all the other non-breeding ones that were already small have just gotten smaller just by being in the group. I don't know, it's just what they do. The pink skunk clownfish definitely love their anemones. They are just so pretty. So here you'll see some of them popping in and out of a large anemone. They tend to stay by their home anemone just for protection as well as not losing their home to other clownfish. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Bye guys.